I'm John Shearer in Yellowstone National Park. When you're here, who's responsible for protecting you from large animals like a big bison walking by safely in the distance? Coming up, we'll hear what the Park Service has to say about it. Cyclists in the Butte community are demanding more respect after a tragedy involving a vehicle and a cyclist on this road. Puerto Rico's governor is stepping down. I'm Laura Podesta. Coming up, we'll show you the moment celebrations erupted in the streets. Good morning to you and welcome to your Thursday. I'm Missy O'Malley. Chet Lehman is off today and Matt Elwell will have our forecast here in just a few moments. Our top story for you now, officials at Yellowstone National Park say there's only so much that they can do to keep people safe from wild animals that roam around popular attractions. MTN's John Shearer reports that step, what steps are being taken after a nine-year-old child was thrown through the air by a bison while visitors are getting a warning as well. The attack happened on a popular trail here at Old Faithful, just like this one. Now, that bison was pretty close to the trail, but still, some basic safety precautions around big animals just weren't followed. What we understand from witnesses was that there were about 50 people, a total of 50, that were at times between 5 and 10 feet from the bison. The park says people should stay at least 75 feet from bison and the length of a football field from bears or wolves. So given that so many people were so close to the bison, I would say that that, that, that was a problem. Now, that's not to blame the child who was the victim of this attack, but animal attacks are all too frequent in the park. Another was this elk attack last fall. It's a wild and wondrous place, but by being here, it's visitors' responsibility to protect this place. Warden says that means protecting yourself, protecting the animals, and protecting the environment. We're constantly thinking about it, wanting to be creative so that we reach new audiences, uh, older audiences about this critical message, which is to keep your distance from wildlife. That's a message park visitors get over and over. But when you're seeing a bison for the first time in your life, sometimes it can be hard to remember that's a wild animal, not a pet in a zoo. At Old Faithful in Yellowstone National Park, I'm John Shearer for MTN News. Now, park rangers are still investigating Monday's bison incident. Matt joins me now. Matt, it was a pretty beautiful day yesterday. Yeah. And in my neck of the woods, not as terribly gusty as maybe we had premeditated, so thank goodness for that. Uh, and that's uh, good. They, we had some areas dealing with showers, thunderstorms, hail, yeah. a, little, a little bit of everything, depending on where you were. Um, but today, our main focus is, once again, on the red flag warning for no northern Gallatin County, back toward Broadwater County, Mar County. That's through 9 p.m. today. Gusty winds, dry conditions, uh, not much of a chance of thunder showers. Look how cool the temperatures are early on. That's actually a good sign for us, at least early in the day. Skies are relatively clear, allowing those early morning temperatures to remain chilly. And temperatures for the afternoon, we're talking mid 80s for most of the area. We'll talk about our rain chances heading into the weekend. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. And now we'll head to the Mining City. Police in Butte are investigating a bird burglary and a theft at Butte Central Elementary School. The break-in was reported around 7 o'clock Wednesday morning after staff noticed several computers and other missing items from the school. Investigators suspect that the school was broken into sometime in those evening hours and they're still trying to figure out exactly how the thief or the thieves got in. During that uh, investigation, uh, we determined that several uh, computer items as well as laptops and um, Notebooks were taken from the school. We're still trying to determine exactly what was taken and from what location they were taken from. Now, because of the number of items taken, police suspect more than one person was involved in this crime. And we'll stay in the mining city. The death of a bicyclist near Butte has riders calling for more awareness between motorists and cyclists sharing the road. MTN's John Amy talks with a Butte cyclist who was severely injured by a hit and run driver while riding her bike. A recent deadly accident between a motor vehicle and a bicyclist in Butte has left one local cyclist with very mixed emotions. I feel sadness and I count my blessings because uh, it could have been me. 
A 70-year-old Washington man died after he was hit by the side view mirror of a passing vehicle while cycling on Highway 2 Sunday afternoon. In 2010, Gina Evans was also hit by the side view mirror of a passing truck while cycling in Butte. Being that I was on my cross bike, I was a little bit higher, otherwise the mirror would have nailed my head. I did get whiplash, I did have two shoulder surgeries, punctured lung, broken ribs. Her incident and this recent tragedy remind cyclists and motorists that they have to safely share the road. People have to remember that we are owners of vehicles also, for the most part. We know the rules of the road, and I believe having patience will be less likely to create patience in the future. As a motorist, respect that bicyclists are a slow moving vehicle and have the same right as a motorist would at a slower pace. She said cyclists must also take precautions. As you can see right here, there's a crook. There could be a car passing here. Otherwise, the cyclist would dump into the crook and the car would have to pay attention to the person on the bike without sending them into the creek. So I would want to pull off as safely as I can and almost get off my bike. Gina adds that she and several of her friends in the cycling community are saddened by the incident that occurred on this highway, especially knowing that it could have been prevented. And I pray for all this person's loved ones and the effect that it takes on the cyclist community. You know, it hits different people literally hard, but especially for this gentleman to be on a tour on the divide, enjoying life, seeing nature, living it. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Some really great points to bring up there. And the Montana Highway Patrol is still investigating Sunday's fatal incident. The identity of the victim has not been yet released. Share the road. Now, after days of protest, the embattled governor of Puerto Rico has resigned. As CBS's news correspondent Laura Podesta reports, Ricardo Roseo stepped down shortly before midnight, and it was met with celebration. Protesters gathered in the streets of San Juan last night, listening intently to a Facebook live stream on their phones as Governor Ricardo Roseo spoke. He tomado la siguiente decisión. At that moment, when he said he would be resigning as governor, jubilation and dancing in the streets. I'm happy, but I am not. I, we're not settling, you know. This is not about taking one corrupt person out. This is about changing the island for good. For nearly two weeks, thousands marched in the streets calling for Roseo to leave office. The demonstrations followed the FBI's arrest of two former aides to the governor on fraud charges involving more than $15 million in federal funding. Shortly after, hundreds of pages of a group chat involving Roseo were leaked. They included profane, homophobic, and sexist comments about political opponents and celebrities. Some even mocked the island's hurricane victims. Next in line for governor should have been Roseo's Secretary of State, but the controversy also forced his resignation. That means Secretary of Justice Wanda Vasquez will be the next governor of Puerto Rico. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Wow. Now, Roseo says his resignation is effective August 2nd. Demonstrators are also upset with Puerto Rico's depending, uh, deepening financial crisis. It has about $70 billion in debt. And nearly half of the residents live below the poverty line, a story that will continue to follow. Closer to home, eating raw cookie dough. It's something that we enjoyed as children and maybe we still do as adults. One Bozeman woman had a dream of opening her own cookie dough truck. And after a lot of hard work, that dream has become a reality. MTN's Emma Hamilton has Brookie's Cookies story. Back in June, this mother of three was finally able to open her bus doors to the Bozeman community. But it wasn't easy for her and her husband to get to this point. I Ubered. He'd work during the day. I would go Uber at night to like 2 o'clock in the morning, get up in the morning and take the kids to school. Uh, we just, yeah, saved everything that we could to get up and going because it costs so much more than you think that it would starting up. Her dreams of this truck began when she was just a child. When I was younger, my brothers and I would always go buy tubes of Pillsbury cookie dough and just eat it by the tube. It was always in our refrigerator. 
The food truck has exceeded all of Brooke's hopes and dreams in just the short two months she's been open, and it's been a big hit in the community, something she never imagined. When people say that you're the talk of Bozeman or I'm just like, I don't, what do you mean? Like, what, how, what do you mean they're talking about me? How are they talking about me? You know, so it's kind of just like been a shock. And she has some even bigger dreams. Definitely multiple locations in multiple cities. I've had so many people reach out to me from Billings, from come, come to Billings, come to Belgrade, come to Butte, come to Helena. When are you coming to Great Falls? So the goal is, is to have as many Brookies cookie doughs as in many towns in Montana as I can. Reporting in Bozeman, Emma Hamilton, MTN News.